Prime Minister Kishida met with President Biden in Washington recently. That meeting comes as Japan announced it would double its defense budget over the next five years in the largest military buildup since World War II. We're joined by Japan's ambassador to the U.S., Tomita Koji. Ambassador Tomita, welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much for having me. What was the objective of uh, Prime Minister Kishida's meeting with President Biden, and what came out of it? Well, I think you do agree that uh, this year, the year 2023, is promising to be a very cons consequential year, not just for ourselves, but for the whole world, with the world in Ukraine, rising tension in East Asia, and uh, continuing impact of the uh, pandemic. And uh, by the way, this is a uh, very consequential year for Japan because we are going to chair the G7 process. So having a summit meeting at the very beginning of this challenge year, challenging year was very important uh, because our partnership matters greatly in taking on these challenges. So it was so gratifying to see the summit turning out to be a such a great success. You said it's a success. What, what, what came out of it? Well, first of all, uh, there was an incredible level of alignment of our interests and policies, which, quite frankly, I have never witnessed um, in the context of uh, bilateral relations. And also, I should add the personal element. You know, watching the two leaders uh, engage each other, there was a genuine affection and respect toward each other. And uh, our two countries are connected at all levels but uh, connection at the, the highest level, anchors the whole cooperation. So that was a very important aspect of the meeting. And I mentioned that Japan recently announced that decision to dramatically increase its defense budget. How has the security situation changed in the Indo-Pacific that prompted that decision? Well, <laughs> when I do speeches in DC, I always say we, we Japanese live in a rough neighborhood. So uh, I, I'm not naming names. But, uh, you know, the new strategy um, the Prime Minister had just uh, introduced uh, is a very serious reality check of our environment, uh, security environment, and also the statement of strong intent to bring our defense efforts to the place where they should be, including, of course, the uh, defense budget you, you mentioned at the outset. And uh, typically, Japan has been very defensive in nature. There's been an announcement, there's been reports about uh, the intention to buy Tomahawk cruise missiles, which is an offensive weapon. Tell me about the defense strategy and how that might have changed. Well, I, the new strategy will not change. The defense ori oriented our, you know, our security posture. Um, but as I said, uh, with the, uh, uh, the situation getting more serious uh, in terms of our security environment, I think we, we need to uh, as I said, bring our efforts to the level that needed to, to protect ourselves, also to, to maintain the peace and stability in the region. So that is the reason why we are, um, are making this effort. And we've been engaging our you know, the friends and neighbors uh, in the region to, to reassure that uh, we are not changing our you know, defense-oriented posture. Mr. Ambassador, you say that the, the security situation is, is more serious. Can mm -hmm. you be more specific as to how the rise, the military rise of China, actually affects the security of Japan? I mean, they're not going to invade Japan. Well, <laughs> I don't think there's any uh, immediate plan for China to invade Japan. But, uh, you know, the, the, the rapid build-up, uh, military build-up in China has been a great source of concern for us. You know, and a certain aspect of their behavior um, calls for, uh, you know, greater um, attention. And uh, um, so it's, it's, I think it's, it's natural for, for the, uh, the countries like Japan to, to, uh, to prepare ourselves for uh, any potential uh, contingency. But at the same time, let me emphasize that uh, uh, China after all, is the second pop, no, the, first, the, the, the most populous country in the world, deeply integrated uh, in global economy. So we, we do need stability in our relations with China. And also we need to engage China in the global efforts to address the issues like climate change. So striking right balance, uh, you know, uh, 
between the competing policy objectives of a very complex uh, uh, undertaking. That is the reason why we need such a close alignment of our policies between uh, Japan and the United States. Has there been any reaction to that, uh, that announcement from Japan, from China, from North Korea, from Russia? Well, of course, uh, um, I wouldn't say they are happy with what we are trying to do. Um, but I, I would say that their reaction uh, had, have been more muted than we expected. Let, let's put it that way. How are the U.S. Um, and Japan working together for emerging technologies, for economic security? Yeah, um, that's a very important question because, you know, as we start engaging ourselves in so-called uh, strategic competition, you know, there's been increasing awareness that uh, the maintaining our economic resilience and competitiveness uh, should be the very important part of our response. And uh, that is a re reason why, you know, we, we, we are doing efforts to maintain, uh, you know, uh, our techno technological edge, you know, protecting our sensitive supply chains, protecting our critical infrastructures. And uh, I think there's a tremendous opportunity for, for two of us to bring together, our f join our forces together in making these efforts. After all, our two countries are very deeply connected. You know, Japan <coughs> has been the largest foreign investor uh, in this country and the U.S. in Japan. And uh, we are both among the uh, technological leaders in cutting edge technology. So I think there are a lot of uh, opportunity out there for us to exploit <coughs> to enhance our economic resilience and competitiveness. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, what has Japan, what's the lesson that Japan has taken from Russia's invasion of Ukraine? What has been the <coughs> reaction to that? Well, the, the, the biggest lesson we are learning from the, uh, the episode in, in Ukraine is that all the values we have believed in, rule of all, um, sanctity of international law, things like that, are uh, very fragile. So uh, on the one hand, we have to dub double our efforts, redouble our efforts to strengthen the rule of law. And at the same time, we, we have to uh, upgrade our deterrent responsive capabilities once uh, this, this order has been broken. So those are the lessons we are learning. And also the, the, the also the important lesson is our security is indivisible because what's happening in Ukraine can happen in East Asia. And I just want to end by saying it was 111 years ago that Japan gave the cherry blossoms to the United <laughs> States and we love seeing them in Washington every spring. So thank you very much. And Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for being on the program. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.